today uh, the Novak used in uh, atrial fibrillation, known atrial fibrillation, in various clinical scenarios. Just want to highlight that all these uh, Novak which are available in India, which includes Debigatran, Rivaroxaban, and Apixaban, they are not the same. And we need to choose the drug according to the clinical situation. So let's discuss six, six situations about this. <clears throat> what I'm going to discuss is about role in a chronic kidney disease. Two would be, you know, role in a chronic liver disease. Third would be, I mean, how do we use it in coronary artery disease vis-a-vis -vis antiplatelet therapy. Then there are normal conditions, obesity, you have old age and, you know, we take a bleeding or a clotting risk into account to decide which of these three drugs which are available as a Novak in India should be used. <clears throat> we generally do not consider this as a very important aspect but I must tell you that the plasma distribution of the drug is variable in all these three drugs. So in an obese person the plasma distribution is uh, volume is high as compared to a thin lean plyel person. So how does it make a difference? It does. For example, if you have a patient where the Novak is indicated, then the patient is low weight, that's less than 60 kg, we need to adjust the dose of Apixaban, Depigatran and Rivaroxaban should ideally be avoided. Okay. Now, because otherwise the dose would increase in the plasma because the distribution volume is small. In a weight more than 120 kg, we can use either Rivaroxaban or Apexaban, but Debigatran, the absorption in the plasma volume would reduce the effect of the drug. So it means in extremes of weight, it is ideal to use Apexaban or uh, we can use Rivaroxaban. Debigatran is not an ideal choice. <clears throat> so let's come to another old age. Most of us actually believe at age 80, why should we start an anticoagulation? The risks are going to be high. And anyway, patient is not going to live long. Let me give you an American statistics. Person who has uh, reached age 80 is about likely to live about nine years more. And that's also true in India. The average lifespan after age 80 is about six years. So six years to go and I think we should try to prevent stroke. Six years with stroke is going to be devastating. <clears throat> uh, let me understand that what is the problem with, with stroke prevention in elderly and if I may tell you the risk of stroke is far higher than in younger people. It's about 1.5 fold more. 50% more incidence of stroke. And the risk of bleeding also is more. But let me tell you the risk of bleeding is less than risk of the stroke. So it, the use of Novak overweighs the risk of bleeding in preventing the stroke even in age more than 80. We, why don't we use an aspirin? That I see a prescription very commonly, use of an aspirin is not helpful in prevention of stroke at all. Let's say, let's use a dual antiplatelet, clopidogrel and aspirin combination. It has been shown that outcome uh, of uh, stroke or prevention of stroke is as good or as bad as with aspirin. Incidentally, the bleeding risk is higher than Novak if you give a dual antiplatelet therapy. So you are not preventing anything you are doing more harm. So dual antiplatelet for stroke prevention is not good. For stroke, you should use prevention. You should do apixaban in elderly. So apixaban is the only drug which should be used at that age more than 80. 2.5 milligram twice a day would be okay. That means we have to keep the dose on the lower side. Next is that, <clears throat> let's make an assessment based on what is the bleeding risk? What is the clotting risk in that particular uh, patient category? 
Uh, this is a, a busy slide and you can see various uh, drugs used and this is the stroke prevention. It favors Novak versus uh, Warfarin and in this case it is major bleed. That means a lesser and lesser major bleed if we go on this side it favors Novak. Let's go have a closer look. The drugs used in this trial was Depigatran and look at the stroke prevention. It was better than Apixaban in another trial. Now look at the bleeding risk. The bleeding risk of Depigatran is higher than the bleeding risk of Apixaban. Meaning that Depigatran is a little more potent uh, Novak than Apixaban. It can prevent stroke in a high risk patients but it leads to higher chance of bleeding. Word over, that's the trend of use of antiplatelet uh, and Novak. And I'm just uh, zooming in to show you, initially green one is uh, warfarin or VKA, and then we had a Debigatran which was available somewhere here. The use of Debigatran increased over period of time. But on induction of rivaroxaban, the use of debigatran reduced. Now with the use of apixaban, look at the increase in the number of patients on apixaban. It is very quickly becoming the choice uh, Novak in most of the categories, except where patient wants once a day, that is rivaroxaban. So it's easier for compliance. Look at the Debigatran role, it is almost diminished world over. Let me take you to another condition. The risk of GI bleed and Novak. That's very, very important. Which Novak you should use in a patient who had a peptic ulcer in the past or who has a GI malignancy where you think the risk of bleeding, GI bleed is high. Now, Debigatran and Rivaroxaban both increase the risk of GI bleed. Debigatran contains a salt tartaric acid which erodes the GI mucosa in the esophagus and the stomach and there is a more likely of an ulcer formation thus the bleeding there. Both Debigatran and Rivaroxaban and that's gene mediated it's variable from person to person they re-excrete these active agents into the lower GI. So both these drugs are re-excreted into the gastrointestinal system. That's why they have an increased risk of even lower GI. So their risk of upper GI bleed and the risk of lower GI bleed are higher with Debigatran and Rivaroxaban because of the re-excretion of the drug into the lumen. So if you can ask me which one would be the worst out of uh, the drugs in the GI bleed, I would pick uh, Rivaroxaban would be the highest risk, Debigatran would be lower and Apixaban is considered the safer out of the, all three lot in GI bleed. So Apixaban wins in GI bleed risk. And that's where the excretion of these agents happen causing the GI bleed. So what do you want to if you have a patient who there is a risk of GI bleed, one is that you must use uh, PPI, you must not use any CIDs, aspirin and clopidogrel should never be used and you can choose uh, Apixaban or you know Debigatran in a lower dose. Let's come to another condition, chronic kidney disease. You guys know this. Because as the EGFR falls, Debigatran has a renal excretion, Rivaroxaban has a more of a liver excretion but still has a, uh, a renal excretion also. So Debigatran up, uh, uh, in patient with the EGFR less than 30 is not recommended, neither is Rivaroxaban. So if you have a patient where the EGFR is between 30 and 60, you can use a reduced dose of Depicatran and Rivaroxaban, but I think it's better to shift to Apixaban where the dose adjustment is only required if EGFR is less than 30. In this category of EGFR less than 15, 
the opinions are divided many people still feel that warfarin is better than novak in a very low uh, egfr or a chronic uh, kidney failure so in there also in chronic kidney disease also apixaban is the winner liver disease if you have cirrhosis of the liver and there is an indication of use of novak in atrial fibrillation then novak should not be used in class c child pub store of class c so should not be used in a severe uh, hepatic failure and in case you want to use dabigatran apixaban and endoxan can be used with the caution rivaroxaban because it has a uh, um, hepatic clearance should not be used it's not recommended coronary artery disease <clears throat> there a lot of errors happen in this area so i must emphasize this in a little more uh, emphatic way i'm going to show you a case a young male who is in a bank employee Uh, he he came. He is an ex-smoker. Stopped smoking two years back. He is hypertensive, but he has a history of a chronic stable angina for last about two three years, and he has a positive TMT. Got an angiogram done, but did not show a very important uh, coronary artery disease requiring a uh, an angioplasty or a stenting. He incidentally has a long-standing atrial fibrillation due to hypertension. now the question is now he requires anticoagulation for atrial fibrillation and now he needs antiplatelet for coronary artery disease so there are three choices i'm going to answer these questions in future question 1 that should he be given novak and dual antiplatelet therapy should he be given novak and single antiplatelet therapy be it as aspirin or clopidogrel or should he be given only novak okay here are the answers this is one large study which was done published in nagm actually this tries to find out in a chronic stable angina which combination of drugs should be used in a patient with atrial fibrillation and coronary artery disease which is stable okay rivaroxaban monotherapy was as good as rivaroxaban plus aspirin and we found that in patient safety the bleeding risk rivaroxaban plus aspirin had a higher bleeding risk than rivaroxaban alone so this is rivaroxaban and antiplatelet combination and monotherapy that's a bleeding risk so we now recommend that you use only novak in all patients of chronic stable angina and you should not add aspirin to the regimen because the bleeding risk is high and the gains are minimal so let us say a patient of atrial fibrillation has undergone a pci he got an angioplasty and a stenting done let's say he got an angioplasty done yesterday what is our approach now if atrial fibrillation is there now in this patient we need to know what is the bleeding risk and what is the clotting risk if the bleeding risk is low that is a younger patient there is no other comorbidity but thrombotic risk is high because of the triple vessel disease or whatever and then in this situation what we do is that we give a dual therapy what dual therapy novak and aspirin triple therapy should be given for one month or 3 weeks in a high bleeding risk only for a week what is the triple therapy a novak an aspirin and clopidogrel okay presogrel uh, and other uh, p2i inhibitor should not be should not be prescribed so clopidogrel aspirin and a novak for just one month and then to dual that is novak and aspirin for one year and thereafter when the patient is stabilized goes back to that category of chronic stable angina only novak no aspirin now the bleeding risk is high you can shorten the triple uh, drug therapy for a uh, one week or two weeks then a dual therapy for between 3 to 
month uh, period depending upon the risk and then single mono novac thereafter so that is the protocol in patients with unstable angina myocardial infarction and a post pci or post bypass surgery so let's see the, the revise what we have discussed just now novac in extreme uh, situations of of weight dabigatron is not the choice ipixaban is the choice is the winner here and second choice is rivaroxaban talk about stroke prevention elderly clearly we know that aspirin does not prevent stroke and the drug if we have to use is ipixaban again a very clear winner in patients more than age 70 or 80 years of age for stroke prevention let's say if you have a high risk patient the dabigatran is the better drug where you need more anticoagulation as compared to a pixaban which is safer lesser bleeding risk but lesser prevention of the strokes if you talk of gi bleed again a pixaban is the safer uh, out of that no i can ckd again i have told you a pixaban is the winner and that's exactly why most world over Uh, patients are being shifted to pixaban than any other uh, novac in a coronary artery disease even after pci remember that triple therapy should be given for about a month dual depending upon what is the degree of risk of bleeding and uh, thrombosis and thereafter once the patient is stable only novac no aspirin let's have a comparison of the drugs dabigatran it's a better anticoagulation cons high risk of bleeding high gi bleed then should be avoided in extreme body weights and we have to avoid in a ckd rivaroxaban the only advantage is once a day rest there are all cons apixaban is clear winner where we have it can be given in ckd it can be given in elderly thin and frail and overweight patients pixaban should be given it is the safest out of all for gi bleed and it is but the only thing is a milder anticoagulant i hope it would be useful and now on you would not decide uh, these drugs based on just what is available but you would choose the drug carefully in all these six situations where i have told you keep watching me keep uh, subscribing it will be a good idea so that whenever i post a new video you would immediately be notified and you can see that have a good time